Chapter 14, Overboard. There was no mistaking the fact that two men, dragging a sleigh, had come to the island. Pete and Teddy followed the tracks excitedly, though a little frightened. We may meet the thieves any minute, Teddy said hoarsely. Keeping close together, the cousins followed the marks. To their dismay, the tracks and footprints went directly across the island and onto the ice again. At this point, all of them vanished. Those men must have carried the sleigh again, Pete said in disgust. But where to? He wanted to continue his sleuthing, but suddenly realized that he had already left Sue alone too long. As the two boys hurried back to the ice boat, Pete said he would phone Officer Cal and tell him what they had discovered. As the cousins climbed aboard Dave's boat, they told him about their latest find. His eyes lighted up. I'll bring you fellows over here again tomorrow, he said. Thanks, said Pete. As they neared the shore, Pete noticed that only a few children remained on the shore. A moment later, his heart skipped a beat when he realized that all of them were older than Sue's playmates. I don't see my kid sister anywhere, he said to Teddy. Her sled's still here, though. Why don't we see if she went home, Teddy suggested. All right, Pete agreed, but he was terribly worried. He picked up the sled's rope, said goodbye to Dave, and headed toward the Hollister house with his cousin. Bursting into the living room, he asked his mother if Sue was there. Why, no, did she run away from you? Pete told her the whole wretched story. Mrs. Hollister instantly became concerned. Oh dear, she exclaimed, where could Sue have gone? She called to the other children and Aunt Marge. Has anybody seen Sue? Suddenly Pam remembered something and said, I saw a box of rice cereal and an empty bottle of milk on the kitchen table a little while ago. Maybe Sue came home because she was hungry. She probably ate and then went back to the pond. Everyone started a search, which included the neighbors' houses. But still the little girl was not found. As they stood together once more in the kitchen, Ricky suddenly snapped his fingers. I know what. Let's hunt for Sue with Zip. The collie came bounding out to the children at the mention of his name. Holly leaned down and put her arms around the dog's neck. Sue's lost, she said. Help us find her, Zip. Come on, Zip, Ricky called as they hurried out the door. The dog ran from one side of the yard to the other. Then he headed for the garage and pawed the door. Why didn't we think of that, Pam said gleefully. Sue's probably in there playing with Domingo. But when they opened the door, the burrow was alone. He turned his head questioningly at them. How they wished he could give them an answer. Zip suddenly ran down along the shorefront. The children followed as he sniffed at a set of fo small footprints in the patches of snow. They went all the way to Sunfish Cove. Zip raised his head and gave several short barks. Ricky and the others could not figure out what he was trying to tell them. Keep on hunting, Ricky ordered. The dog put his nose to the ground and trotted back along the shore, then up to the house. Sue did come home, Pete said. Zip nosed around the back steps, then bounded up them and scratched on the kitchen door. Mrs. Hollister opened it. Zip seems to think Sue's inside the house, Pete told her. As they watched the dog, he circled the kitchen a couple of times, then went to the foot of the hall stairway and started up. Zip must be off the trail, Mrs. Hollister said, because Sue's snowsuit isn't around anywhere. But the children followed Zip up the steps. He did not go to Sue's room, but instead whined at the door to the attic stairway. Pete opened it and clicked on the light. Everyone clumped up the steps behind the collie with Pete in the lead. Sue's here, the boy shouted in relief, running to the far corner of the big attic room. His little sister was huddled in the corner, fast asleep. 
her ski suit and boots still on. Sue's head was tilted to one side and her cap was half off. Beside her right hand was a bowl of rice cereal and milk. Sue must have been playing house, Pam remarked. The sound of voices awakened the sleeping child. She looked up and blinked her eyes. Mommy, mommy, she said, startled. I couldn't find him and he must be terrible hungry. Couldn't find whom? The Jewel Nissa, Sue said. The little old man who stays in our attic at Christmas and likes rice pudding. As the others smiled, Aunt Marge leaned down and hugged her little niece. Bless your heart, she said. You remember what I told you. Well, you leave the rice pudding on Christmas Eve, and I'm sure your Jewel Nissa will eat it. The whole group went down to the living room. As Sue took off her snowsuit, she told the others how she had become cold waiting for the boys. So I ran home to have a tea party with the Jewel Nissa. I had cookies, but he didn't come for his pudding. Holly had seated herself on the floor beside Zip. You're a good detective dog, she said. You bet he is, Teddy remarked. And your brother's a good detective too. Pete, tell him about the clue we discovered on Blackberry Island. Upon hearing the story, the others were amazed and agreed with Pete that he should notify Officer Cal by phone. The policeman praised the boy and said he would go to Blackberry Island at once. Later that evening, he called back to say there was no sign of the thieves there, though Pete had no doubt been right. I'm going to look some more after school tomorrow, Pete told him. All the next day, Pete was fidgety to start his sleuthing, and the time seemed to pass slowly until his teacher announced a rehearsal for her class's part in the pageant. It would illustrate a Christmas custom in Holland. Hearing this, Pete and Dave looked at each other and grinned. They had been chosen to play the part of a white horse on which a bishop would ride. Dave would be the front legs, Pete the hind ones, with a board from one boy's shoulder to the other boy's for the bishop to ride on. A white sheet with a tail attached would be draped over them. Dave's head would fit inside the stuffed horse's head and Pete would keep his head lowered. When the white steed was put together, Pete slumped down a little so the animal was slightly lower in the rear, and the pupils howled with laughter. Pete straightened up, and the boys paraded around. As Pete went past Joey's desk, he saw to it that the horse's right hind foot gave the mean boy a little kick on one shin. Cut that out, Joey growled. Reaching the front of the room, the horse kneeled, and the bishop, one of the smaller boys, dressed in a red velvet robe and wearing a mitered headdress, climbed up. Then a boy named Sam, who had covered his face with burnt cork, came alongside to represent the bishop's Moorish servant, Black Pete. The horse arose, and the little procession walked back and forth. That's very good, said Miss Hansen and the students clapped. Pete and Dave, on the day of the pageant, will you please wear white trousers? We don't want our horse to have a white body and dark legs, do we? Directly after the sheet and costumes had been removed, classes were dismissed. Pete told Dave he would meet him at the dock in half an hour and hurried home. Pam said that Teddy would not be back for some time as he was downtown Christmas shopping with Aunt Marge and Jean. May I go with you instead, Pete? She asked. I'd love to help you hunt for clues. Come along, her brother replied. Pam told Mrs. Hollister where they were going, then hurried down to the dock with Pete. It sure is blowing a gale, Pete said, looking out across the lake. Dave's ice boat should go like a rocket today. There he is now, Pam said, pointing to a speck far out on the frozen surface. It did not take Dave long to guide his speeding craft up to the Hollister's dock. Pete told him Teddy was not home yet and Pam would take his place. 
The ice boat started slowly across the lake, then rapidly gained speed. Crickets were going like lightning, Pete exclaimed. Dave smiled and bent forward, his right hand on the tiller. Pam grew fearful. All at once, she shouted, Look out, Dave! Ahead of them were several large cakes of ice, which had been chopped out by some winter fishermen. Dave yanked the tiller. The left runner rose off the ice as the craft tilted dangerously. Hold on tight, Pete shouted, grabbing for his sister. But it was no use. The ice boat turned over, hurling its three riders onto the frozen surface of the lake. <laughs>